Hey, this is Professor Perez. Today, we are going to take a look at division. But before we get started, we need Charlie Heber to be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, ready to go? All right, let's get started right there. Okay, Charlie, there are different ways of indicating division. We use the division symbol, or we use this diagonal bar, or we can use a fraction bar. Remember, fractions actually represent division problems. Or we can use the division symbol, this little shape like that, right? <laughs> Basically, all these expressions are telling you to divide 12 by 4. In other words, try to figure out how many 4s go into a 12. What does division mean? Well, 12 divided by 4 is basically asking you how many 4s go into a 12. There's one 4, there's two 4s, and there's three 4s. So three whole 4s go into a 12. So 12 divided by 4 is 3. And you can check your answer by saying, hey, that makes sense, because 4 times 3 is 12. All right, let's take a look at this one here. 12 divided by 3. How many 3s go into a 12? Well, here's one 3, here's two 3s, here's three 3s, and here's four 3s. So notice, four whole 3s go into a 12. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. That makes sense, because 3 times 4 is 12. That's how you check your answer. 13 divided by 4. Ooh, here we're going to have some remaining units. Watch. How many 4s go into 13? Well, there's one 4, there's two 4, there's three 4s. But notice here, three whole 4s make up a 12. But notice we have one remaining unit. When our remaining unit is less than the number we're dividing by, in this case it's less than a 4, we stop and we write down our answer. 13 divided by 4 is 3 because 3 whole 4s go into 13, but you have one remaining unit, so we write that as remainder 1. Okay, let's try another one here. 15 divided by 4. How many 4s go into 15? Well, there's one 4, there's two 4s, there's three 4s. And notice, we have three remaining units. So how many whole 4s go into 15? Three of them with a remainder of three units. Now, let's do the division using this long division sign, right? We put the 15 inside and the 4 is outside because we're trying to figure out how many 4s go into 15. So 4 goes into 15 three times. 4 times 4 is 16, that's too much. 4 times 3 is 12. So 4 times 3 is 12, and then we subtract. So we have three remaining units. And remember, when your remaining units are less than the number you're trying to divide into, which in this case is that 4, you stop and you write your answer. So 3 whole 4s, 1 into 15, but we have a remainder of 3 units. And that's our answer right there. Let's take a look at 15 divided by 7. How many 7s go into 15? Well, there's one 7, and there's the second 7. So 2 whole 7s go into 15, but notice we have a remainder of 1 unit. So our answer is 2 with a remainder of 1 unit. How about 20 divided by 7? Well, two 7s gives us 14, and this time we have a remainder of 6. So two whole 7s go into 20, but you have a remainder of 6 units right there. Now let's do it with the long division sign. Put the 20 inside and the 7 outside, because we're trying to figure out how many 7s go into 20. 7 goes into 22 times, that's 14. 7 times 3 would give us 21, that would be too large. So 7 times 2 is 14, we subtract, that gives us 6 remainder units, and because our remaining units is less than the number we're dividing into the 20, which is a 7, we stop there and write our answer. So our final answer is 2, with a remainder of 6 units there. Okay, let's try this one. 4 times 8. 4 times 8 means you have 8 of these 4s being added together, and that's 32. So think of this. 32 divided by 4. How many 4s go into 32? Well, 8. It's right there. That's because 4 times 8 is 32. That's how you can check your answer. What about 8 times 7? There's 7 8s being added together, and that's 56. 56 divided by 8 is asking you how many 8s go into 56. It's obviously 7, right? That's because 8 times 7 is 56. Now, what about 59 times 8? 
I'm sorry, 59 divided by 8. How many 8's go into 59? Well, 7 of those 8's will give you 56. But you have 3 remaining units, right? So 59 divided by 8 is 7 with a remainder of 3 units. Okay, let's move on. 5 times 13. There's 13 of these 5's being added together, and that's 50 plus 15, because 10 5's gives you 50, and 3 more 5's gives you 15. That's a total of 13 5's. And that's equal to 65, right? So 65 divided by 5. How many 5's go into 65? 13 of them, right? That's because 5 times 13 is 65. Well, let's do it using the long division symbol. 5 goes into 65. Well, 5 goes into 6 one time. 1 times 5 is 5. You subtract. Bring down your 5. 5 goes into 15 three times. 3 times 15 is 0. We have a remainder of 0, so we simply write our answer as 13. 65 divided by 5 is 13. Well, how about 69 divided by 5? We put the 5 outside to figure out how many 5's are going into 69. 5 goes into 6 one times. 1 times 5 is 5. You subtract. You know, 9. 5 times 3 is 15, and we bring that down. Remember, you're subtracting to figure out how many remaining units you have. That's why you're subtracting here. And 19 subtract 15 is 4. So how many 5's go into 69? There's 13 whole 5's with a remainder of 4 units. And that is your final answer. That's it for now. We'll see you again soon.